If you watch our weekly row by row garden show, you've probably heard us talk about kale soup. And if you don't watch our weekly row by row garden show, you've probably been hiding under a rock. You need to check that out every Thursday at eight o'clock on our YouTube channel. But anyway, kale soup is one of my favorite fall and winter dishes. And we've got plenty of kale in the garden. Today, I wanna to show you how we make it. Now we've got two varieties of kale growing out here in the dream garden. We've got this Lacinato kale here, which works really well for kale soup. But today, hello tiger, we're gonna be using this blue night kale that has been needing to be picked for a little while. So we're gonna use this frilly leaf kale to make our kale soup. So step one, pick some kale. Now, since we're picking this just to take in the house and cook right now, we're not gonna put it in bags like we showed you in the last video. So we're just gonna get these bottom leaves off here, these big ones. And probably wanna make sure we have plenty. Always better to have a little too much and not enough. So we'll probably pick enough to fill this whole little basket right here, just to make sure we have plenty. And while we don't have any big onions ready at the moment, we do got some of these here. We can pull as green onions. Everything tastes better with a little onion in it. So we'll grab a few of these bigger ones. These are the ones we planted in October. And let's see here. And that should be plenty there. So we can uh, use these bulbs right here to go in the soup at the start and then use these green onions as a nice little garnish there. All right, so we in the kitchen now, we got our kale. We took the stems off of it, the big stems at least, and um, got it washed, or as we say in the South, washed. And I uh, got it chopped up in little pieces here. Got that nice and clean, it wasn't too dirty. We got our green onions that we harvested. Got those cleaned up a little bit so we can slice those up nice. We got our pan over here getting hot. And the first thing we wanna do is to go ahead and slice up into little cubes some of this market bacon here to put down there with the onions to get started. So let's get this bacon open here and see what we got there. We don't need a ton of it. Just a few pieces will do. We'll save the rest of that for later. And just gonna cut this up into some tiny little pieces here. Cut it in half. Try to cut it once that way. And then just some little bitty pieces here. And we'll throw that in there. And that'll give some good flavoring kind of kickstart this kale soup. So we're gonna go ahead and get our bacon in there. Everything tastes better with a little bacon, right? And let that just start getting happy in there. And while that's cooking, we'll cut up our onions and get them in there too. And on these onions here, I'm just gonna make little slices like this right here. These are nice and kind of young and tender. Some Savannah sweet onions here. And get those cut up. We'll save them green tops for later. All right, that bacon's in there doing its thing. Getting a little crispy. Letting some of that bacon fat loose in there. And then we'll go ahead and dump these onions in there. Let them kind of start to get translucent a little bit. Cook down just a little bit. And this pot we're doing this in, you could do it in any big pot you have, but I like these uh, enamel cast iron pots. They just, they get real hot and they hold heat well. They're just really good for cooking these soups like this where you're just kind of adding a lot of stuff. One 
ingredient at a time. All right, that right there is starting to look pretty good. Now we're gonna start adding our kale. Now we're not gonna put any water in here. We're not gonna boil our kale. We're gonna kind of saute it and kind of cook it down. So we'll just start to add a little bit, just a little bit at a time. We'll let that kale start to cook down there. And then once that cooks down, we'll add some more. This pot won't hold that whole sink full of kale. So we'll just do a little bit of time till we get it all cooked down. And then we can add them other ingredients. That's probably enough right there for right now. Once that cooks down, we can put some more in there. And if you want to, you can go ahead and put your lid on there and it kind of speed up that process and get it cooked down a little quicker. And while that kale's cooking down, I'm going to get my beans ready to put in there. I like to use these white Great Northern beans here, but I like to wash these things off, get all that kind of syrup off of them that comes in that can. And if you've got some beans that you put up from your garden, that would work even better. So we're just gonna kind of rinse these beans off here. And that should be good. Now also while that kale is wilting down, I like to go ahead and cut up my sausage. I've got some mild smoked sausage here. And this stuff will give that kale soup some really good flavor. We just cut it in little slices and uh, have some meat in there. And this kale soup will be a complete meal. You get your veggies, you'll be getting your taters, you'll be getting your meat, everything. Now you can put how much ever sausage in there you like, but in my opinion, it's hard to get too much. I think I bought two pounds at the store earlier and probably gonna use at least a pound and a half of that. All right, let's check on our kale here. See, that's nice and wilted down there. It's gonna be some good stuff right there. I probably won't use all that kale I washed just because Still got to put my sausage, my beans, and my taters in there. So about that pot half full of kale, just like we see right there, is going to be just right. So now I'm going to get my sausage in there. And I'm going to go ahead and get my beans in there. And then it'll be time to cut up some taters now. Now we don't have any homegrown taters this time of year, so we have to use these store-bought taters. And I got some... Yukon gold taters right here we're gonna do and we grow these things we plant ours in february and harvest them in may we grow these yukon golds and really like them but one thing about them being really good is they don't last long and so usually by the end of the summer we have eaten all of our taters And I'll just throw these in there with all that other good stuff and we'll add our liquid last. And the taters is kind of like the sausage. You can add as many taters as you want. If you just want a few taters or if you don't like potatoes for whatever reason, you don't have to add taters to it. But it does give it a nice little texture there. So I put my taters in there, and then as far as the liquid goes, we don't add water. We use chicken broth or chicken stock, and if you've got your own homemade chicken stock, that's always better. But we use store-bought chicken broth this time, and it usually takes about uh, two of those 32-ounce containers in there to get it to a nice level right up towards them where them taters are there. As everything in here is cooked except the potatoes, so all we need to do here is crank the heat up, let them potatoes cook, and when your potatoes are done, your kale soup is ready to go. All right, I believe them taters ought to be about ready now. Let's take a look and see here. We don't need them. We ain't going to mash these, so we still want a little texture to them. We want to make sure they're done. Oh, yeah. That tater's done. And that soup is ready to eat. I didn't mention this earlier, but a little pro tip, you wanna put your bay leaf in there that'll add some nice flavor in there as well. Just make sure you take it out. You don't wanna eat that rascal. So 
So that's our kale soup right there. We got our kale in there, bacon, beans, sausage, taters, onions, all kind of good stuff. Let's dip aside a little bowl here so it can be cooling off. Get a little bit of everything, some of that kale, sausage. I like a lot of sausage in mine. Taters, get a little more kale there. And then we'll just come in here with a few of these green onions that we got from the garden earlier. Some of those there on top. Shoo wee, shut your mouth. That's gonna be some fine eating right there. So we got kale soup with sausage, potatoes, a little bit of bacon and onions we started with, and uh, chicken broth in there. And we got finished off with some fresh green onions from the garden. Ooh, what kind of kale is it? It is blue night kale, so frilly leaf kale. Oh. Samuel's. Samuel's wanting a little bit. Yes, yeah, she is. So I'm ready to dig in? Yeah, yeah. I've already been snacking What'd on What'd you my... think? Looks Are... a little hot to me. A little hot? I'll let it, well, I'll let yours cool off for a minute. It should be, should be good to go. I was telling the folks earlier, you about can't put too much sausage in there. That's pretty good. I like them fresh onions on top like that. Gives it some texture and a little bit different kick it flavor. That uh, that blue night kale, it seems to hold its texture pretty good even through cooking the soup there. It uh, it don't get mushy. It's actually got a little more texture than say if you were to, you know, turnip greens or mustard were. I think mm. it's got a little, uh, little more crunch to it. Do you find a different flavor profile with that when you do the La Sonata? Mm. They're probably pretty close. Uh, I think that blue night is, is better if you're gonna eat it fresh, raw on a salad. Um, but I've made it many times with the La Sonata, it was just as good. Mm -hmm. Good tater. Now this is just a complete meal. We got, you got your carbohydrates, your protein, and your vegetables. That's all right. in one dish. Sammy, you're gonna have to wait till we get through. Yeah, maybe a piece of light bread you could throw in there. Or a little or, piece of cornbread. Or cornbread or cracker. Um, besides that, that's all you need. Pretty stinking good. All right, folks. So I hope you enjoyed walking through there how we make our kale soup that we always talk about on the show. If you enjoyed this video, give us a big like, give us a big thumbs up, give us a big share, and I'll see you on the next video.